Hey everyone, uh, so now we're going to talk about uh, render tops and the use of render pass top, uh, which I have lots of um, instances of those operators around my project. Uh, so I just want to talk briefly about why uh, you might use that, why it's useful. Uh, so here we're looking at just my, my render top, which is rendering my, uh, my main terrain. Uh, but if we see, let me hit perform mode here real quick. Uh, so we can see I've got, in addition to, to the rain, I've got this feedback loop system, which is creating uh, kind of a weird, trippy cliff face um, type of effect below it. Um, but that feedback loop does not affect things like this pink sign that's ahead of us, or if I click this sign. A and then square. These uh, these geometric forms, which I call uh, monoliths, turn that down a little bit. Um, these pop up. So the feedback effect does not affect those. Also, um, I also have these little firefly little things flying around. Uh, in part one, I showed the moon, uh, which also is using a render pass top. Uh, it's not affected by the feedback loop. Um, so when you have various geometries uh, and you want to maintain some, some depth information, because they, they all live in the same 3D space, right? If I look here, geometry viewer, um, where this right now is only showing my terrain, but all of the these monoliths that we also see. If we go in here, let's go into the monolith container. Here they are, right here. All right, so they they live in a cohesive, you know, X Y Z coordinate space, uh, and sometimes you want those objects to be um, to be masked in front, right? So that my terrain is here, so it's blocking. The view of these monolith forms behind it. Um, the sign disappeared underneath the moon over around the corner. It gets kind of masked by the train. Um, so how do we kind of combine all of those all of those things um, to have a 3D space, but then also have our top effects chains uh, only affect the thing that we want it to affect, right? Um, so here I'm only rendering my terrain, uh, and that's what's going through this this feedback loop. Um, we can see as I move around, right? It kind of, you know, nothing, nothing too crazy. Um, just got a simple transform that's pulling it down. Standard things here. I'm just creating a little edge. Um, the edge is kind of creating a little, little black outline on the bottom. Um, but then, so let's look at maybe the monoliths here is, is what I actually render. Uh, the monoliths is grabbing the uh, buffer from the render one top. It's, uh, they're all looking at the same camera, so cam one, uh, and it's looking at a geo called monolith slash um, any geos that are inside that. So this is where we looked before inside monoliths. Uh, and I have a couple of different geos there. So it's, it's looking at this one. So that's what is being rendered. Uh, so the key, the, the way that I typically use render pass top, there's there's a lot of uh, cool ways you could use this, uh, but you could see how um, the the forms are sort of masked um, at certain areas. So this is where the terrain would be covering it, uh, and that's because so I cleared the camera color. So what that is saying, it's uh, the color buffer inside my render top has my my terrain sort of on it, but I'm clearing that, so I'm getting rid of it. Um, but I am maintaining the depth buffer from that. So I, I still have this kind of XYZ coordinate space um, information, which I'm using to, to mask these things. Like if I didn't clear that, that is maintaining the stuff that's in my render top, and it's merely adding this new monolith stuff. Um, but I don't want this terrain like here. I, I only want the the monolith stuff, right? So I clear the camera, but I maintain depth, which means that is still blocked. If I also clear the depth buffer, then it is taking no account of what the terrain is doing in the render top, and it's basically 
um, only rendering this, uh, this monolith stuff. Um, so to maybe understand that a little bit better, let's look at a, a more simple example, which I put down here. I don't need a joystick. Um, so let's let's look through some some options of how I might use this. So I've got right now the same same render top is rendering these two shapes, the, the sphere and the torus. What if what if I want to add a little feedback loop situation? And I'll try to just do this quickly. Let's do like a level, and let's make that something like that, and maybe make that something like that and let's go and add a transform also and make that move up a little bit and scale it up a little bit okay and let's just see what happens bring that back and we'll just do an over okay let's see what's happening Make that a lot less. Okay, I like it. Okay, so that's that's like week one of Touch Designer. Nothing, nothing difficult at all. Um, but what if I only want the feedback loop to affect the blue sphere and not the torus? Uh, in which case, okay, how how do I do that? So maybe maybe for my render, I can go in here. So right now it's rendering all geometry. What if I just told it render only geo one? Okay, cool. So it's the feedback loop on the sphere. And then, so you might think, okay, maybe I'll just do another render here. In that case, maybe only render Geo2. So now I'm only rendering that. And then, I don't know, how do I, so it's my feedback loop. I was like, I don't know, can I just do, can I do an over here? Where's the over? So that, over that. But then that's not right, right? Because the, the front of the torus should be blocking the that part of the, the sphere. Uh, okay, so that's not gonna work. This is where this is where render pass comes in. So let's go here. Instead of a render top, I get a render pass. And I tell the render pass to look at my render top. And looking at the same camera, great. Um, Geo, I only want to render my Geo 2. So I put Geo 2 in right there. And okay, right now, I am maintain. I, so I'm only rendering Geo 2, which is my torus. So why is this blue sphere there? It's because I'm, I'm grabbing the buffer from render 1, uh, and I have not cleared it. So it's, it's still maintaining that information that's inside the render top. So let's clear that. And that's kind of cool, right? So I, I'm, I'm not clearing my depth buffer, which means it maintains this kind of blank spot here. If I clear the depth buffer, then that would that'd be almost like I just did another render top. Um, if I didn't do that, but clear the depth buffer, then that's kind of puts that behind. So that's also kind of not what I want. So you kind of like play with these options here. This, this is the way I typically use the render pass where I clear the camera color, but I do not clear the depth buffer. So now, what if I did another thing here? Okay, that's over. Okay, that's still wrong. What if I did the render pass on top and the feedback sphere on the bottom? Okay, so that's pretty cool. So the feedback is only affecting the blue sphere. It's not affecting the torus. You know, I could add other effects here if I want. Let's say like an edge or whatever. Um, Ooh, I kind of like that actually. It's kind of nice. Let's, let's do a comp. Um, okay, so edge is only affecting the torus. Feedback is only affecting the sphere. However, um, you know this doesn't this doesn't look quite right because my um, my render pass here. This is only creating a little mask for the actual geometry of the um, of the sphere, not for the the feedback loop stuff. Because if this was kind of like smoke, it, it would be passing in front of this this back part of the torus, right? So what else can we do? What what else can we do to fix this? Um, let's do let's do something else. Let's add another render pass. And for this one, so what I'm gonna do is 
convert render, I'm gonna just render both of those again. And render pass. So if we see here, if I, if I try to put render one into my render pass, that gives me an error. Um, this top can only be connected to one render pass top. So what you need to do is you create a kind of chain. So render pass one is um, getting the buffer from render one. Render pass two gets the buffer from render pass one, right? So it's kind of this chain um, from one top to the next top. Uh, okay, so and so it's for my feedback loop, instead of using this render, I'm gonna use this render pass. So let's connect that and let's replace that one. Okay, so now render pass top, let's, uh, let's do this. So for that one, only render geo one, clear. And look at that beautiful thing. So I'm, uh, I'm uh, kind of masking that depending on the depth buffer where it should be masked because of the torus. Uh, and now, since that is now masked, I can plop this on top and my torus on the bottom of my over. And that is kind of like what I wanted, right? So. You gotta, um, you know, get creative, be experimental with how you combine these things. Um, it might not be obvious right off the bat, um, but with combining render with lots of render passes um, and, you know, maintaining your depth buffer, you can add lots of different effects and then have the the, the kind of 3D space still um, still make sense and cohere to each other. Okay, cool.